a fundamental thing for this film was was involvement of the actors of the cast. And I consider people like Clive, Michael Caine, and Julian Moore pretty much my co-writers in all of this. And they were so clever and so generous in how they dealt with the characters. Well, it was very clear to me when I first read the script that he was trying to create a different kind of hero. You know, this isn't your sort of big Hollywood obvious hero. He's a flawed human character that sort of drags into this extraordinary situation. I use, I, I had Mark Clyde. You know, because he knew that his character was a character that is pretty much a drunk, is completely passive, is against the Hollywood rules that would tell me uh, he's not proactive. From the standpoint of, a, of an action hero, he's the most clumsy action hero you could ever seen. He's just trying to survive. Alfonso's the only director I know who would put their hero in flip-flops for a whole sequence of the movie, because I think anything to take away from that filmic, heroic thing, he wants it to be an ordinary guy in an extraordinary situation. A large part of the movie is a big sort of action chase movie, and Theo is the most unlikely guy taking you through it. In the script, we define him as a veteran of hopelessness. He's like a zombie, in a way. He is someone that the reality is so overwhelming, and his own personal reality has gone through so much pain, and the reality everywhere around is so overwhelming that he just gives up. At a particular point in the story, Julian comes back into his life and all of that stuff is sort of reawakened and she's really the catalyst for pulling Theo into this extraordinary journey, really. My character, Julian, is um, the leader of a group called the Fishes, whose goal it is to provide a safe haven for refugees everywhere. Theo's motivations are more emotional than, than Julian's motivations. She has her own agenda. It's a really well-intended agenda, but it's, it, she doesn't have much time for emotion at that point. And Theo, at the beginning of this film, has pretty much given up. He's very dry, he's very cynical, and he sort of doesn't care. He's sort of lost touch with everything. He's sort of just going about his life and in a bit of a sort of daydream, really cynical, depressed, what's the point? No one's had a kid in 18 years. It's like, there's no future. There's no, well, what's the point of caring? And gradually through the movie, he's woken up. You have Julianne Moore in this movie. It's a rather brief appearance. Now, I'm wondering how you got up your courage to offer her a role that brief when she's such a big, big star. Oh, just by being a little irresponsible about the whole thing. It's just, <laughs> I, I love Julian Moore. I always wanted to work with Julian Moore. And it's one of those things that you just, you just try to see if it would happen. And, and the great thing is that Julian understood what the film was about. You know, I think that the, the film deals with a lot of concern, uh, uh, it deals with concerns that, that are present in a lot of people. Uh, uh, particularly if you have children. And, uh, and, and she understood exactly the movie we were trying to do. She understood that this was not, because it's, yes, in a way it's an action, in, in an action film, more a chase movie than, than a science fiction movie. But she understood that it was about things, about issues, about, uh, about the situation we're living today. And in that regard, uh, I find that the film uh, is an action film that is very women's friendly in the sense that it's not a cynical film. It can be intense, but it's not cynical. Uh, the, the hero never takes a gun. The hero never uh, does acts of violence. Uh, I think that the, 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 the whole thing is that it's an intensity around people who's trying to, to, to nurture other people. So, um, and I think that's one of the reasons Julian connected with the film. Some, some dark material. How did you guys handle that on a day-to-day -day basis? Um, how did you keep things light and keep from being depressed? For we, we laughed a lot, believe it or not. I mean, it, you know, it was a tough, grueling shoot and the environments were pretty awful, but there was also a lot of humor. He's a very lively, spirited guy, Alfonso, and it's not, you know, often, often the, you know, when you see those films, you think, oh, it must have been so heavy, it must have been so heavy, and it, it isn't the case. There was a lot of humor as well. I was juggling and <laughs> with oranges and stuff. No, it's, it's just, you know what it is, it's, uh, particularly with actors, it's about uh, uh, engaging them. And, and I, 
Truly, the, the matter is that these actors were protecting me. Maybe they were keeping the key things. Uh, they think I was keeping the things light, but because they were, they, they were, were they, they didn't realize that they were actually protecting me. All the time they were uh, digging into the material and trying to get uh, uh, the. Be I, I consider my, my my actors co-writers of this screenplay. So uh, you just. Uh decided to take a chance and, and it worked. It worked, but it worked with Michael Caine as well. That, well, was, I that wanted... was my dream. That was my dream to work with Michael Caine. Ever since we wrote the screenplay in 2002, we finished writing the first, the, the first draft, we used to call the Michael Caine character to this guy. And, and, and I was just so thrilled when Michael accepted to do that. Uh, the, the, the best thing is that when I met Michael, uh, I met him in this, in this private club in London. And I was so nervous. I was meeting with Sir Michael Caine. And suddenly he just starts talking about the friendship he had with John Lennon. And I was very impressed. And he kept on telling adventures and stuff. And I was saying, he's just bragging about the cool people he met in his life. <laughs> and then, right when I'm thinking that, he says, the reason I'm telling you this about Lennon, he, he said John, because they were friends. Uh, the, the reason I'm telling you this about John is because I want to play this character as an older Lennon. And that's what he did. Even the, the tone of his voice and the nasal quality of his voice, the cadence of his voice is just like John Lennon. And the beautiful thing is that when we were doing wardrobe tests, uh, we were at his place and he, he gets all the wardrobe together and the beard and long hair. He looks himself in the mirror, and it's one of those moments I enjoy witnessing great actors. Is that he was just being Michael Caine, being put all this stuff. He goes in front of the mirror, and his body language transforms into this new character, into John Lennon. And in that moment, his wife walks into the room, goes next to him, looks around, and asks everybody, Have you seen my husband? And it's when he starts laughing, he said, okay, this is the way I'm going to play it. Not even my wife recognized me. <laughs> <laughs> and I think it was brilliant because also he's had, in, in the film, he's some sort of a oasis, you know, in which uh, is a place that you feel safe. Because you feel safe with Michael Caine. I tell you, I would watch Michael Caine do anything, reading the yellow pages, whatever he wants to do. He's but you never, you never seen Sir Michael Caine asking Clive Owen or, or anybody, pull my finger, is what he does. He has pulled my finger in the film. <laughs> <laughs> you never watched it. You never seen Mike, see Michael Caine doing that before. <laughs> no. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell icon so you don't miss any of our videos.